Hey, this is Jane. Welcome to my channel, Like a Tumbleweed. In this episode, I'm going to recap some things that I've done over the past year. It's my one year anniversary coming up, living full time in my van, Daisy. Hey, tumbleweeds! Me and Piglet are hiding out in the van today because it's a very blustery and rainy day. And I don't know if you can see the tree back there blowing in the wind. The wind is actually not as bad as it was earlier. Um, I posted a short earlier that shows how the wind blew my hair around. Oh, speaking of my hair, I chopped it off. I cut it myself, so it's very uneven, but... Eh. I think it looks okay. I think it looks better. So anyway, I just wanted to um, tell everybody that I'm celebrating a birthday. It's not my birthday. It's Daisy's birthday. Daisy was one year old on um, October the 10th. So that was the day that I purchased her from the RV dealer in Jacksonville, Florida. So a year ago today, I was still living in an apartment in Jacksonville. It was uh, on the sixth floor, had a balcony overlooking the St. John's River, and was right across the street from downtown Jacksonville. And it was a very nice apartment, but it was only 500 and 40 square feet, I think, something like that, and uh, it was almost $2,000 a month, <laughs> so uh, I had sold the hotel, uh, um, I think it was on September 29th we closed, and so I paid off a whole bunch of debt that I, that I had acquired um, through from borrowing money to renovate the hotel to put in to, you know to open the gallery and uh, I had some money left over and I bought Daisy with that money and I really wasn't sure if I was going to be traveling around full-time in Daisy at the time but it didn't take long for me to realize that I wanted to be in the van not apartment. So I had to stick around Florida for a couple of months to have cataract surgery. So I paid to stay in a Flamingo Lake RV resort uh, north of Jacksonville, which is a very nice resort, by the way. And I enjoyed my stay there. But Florida is not my thing. <laughs> I prefer the desert. So, that's what I'm doing here. I am at the alpaca farm. You can probably see them back there somewhere. I'm not sure if that's an alpaca or a post. <laughs> I don't have my glasses on. Um, and it's been very windy the past couple of days. My van is coated with red dirt. I can show you how dirty it is in here. So I'm constantly wiping stuff down and sweeping the floor. So that's supposed to end. It's supposed to rain tomorrow and then it's supposed to be nice again. And uh, it's the high was 60 degrees today. I don't know what it is right now, but it's kind of cold. Uh, 67 degrees inside the van and it was uh, so about 72 degrees earlier when I was, uh, I had to pull the solar panels in because so, they can't get wet, which is I'm a little disappointed about, <laughs> but oh uh, well. So anyway, I just wanted to make this video to talk about my past year traveling in Daisy. So... I think it was the last week in December. Yeah, it was the last week in December. I uh, 
checked out of the RV park in Florida. I was all checked out by the doctor for my cataract surgery and I couldn't, I couldn't see as good as I could before, but, uh, everything was brighter and clearer. And I had a pair of glasses that, they weren't my latest glasses. They were the ones that, that I had the time before that. And I put those on and I could see perfectly. So I took them to the doctor's office and, uh, he, he tested my eyes and said, you can see 20-20 with those glasses. So he told me just to keep wearing them. And so I have been. So anyway, uh, after all that was done, um, I was free to roam about wherever I wanted to go. And obviously, I wanted to come to the Southwest because I was born in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And... Um, I lived in Albuquerque not too long ago. That's when, where I lived when we built the other van out when I was married. And uh, I lived in uh, Chandler, Arizona for a few years uh, when I got my job with the, uh, a food distribu distribution company. And I really love Phoenix area. I just love Arizona and New Mexico. So uh, I decided to come back here. I didn't expect to stay here. I thought I would go back to Florida again to visit my daughter and her four daughters and her extended family. <laughs> but uh, just the thought of driving all the way back to Florida and there's not really any boondocking places in Florida, and I didn't want to spend the money on uh, RV parks or even state campgrounds, so I stayed here because there's so much free camping here. You just, why pay for it somewhere else? And it's really pretty here. I've seen the most beautiful sunsets and sunrises. I spent last winter mostly in Quartzsite. I did uh, take a, some side trips to Palm Springs, um, Joshua Tree, uh, went to Yuma several times, Lake Havasu, um, but you know, just if I didn't have a place to go, I'd just go back to Quartzsite. I could get my mail there and, and I could fill up with the propane whenever I needed. There were several places there that sell propane, several dump stations. Um, there's the dump station that you get when you pay the LTVA fee. Um, it's that uh, $180 for seven months. This is the last year that's probably going to be that cheap. Um, so I bought my, I bought my t uh, my pass for the LTVA, um, but I haven't been to Quartzsite yet to, to get my sticker. I probably won't go to Quartzsite until November or maybe even December, just whenever the weather starts getting cold here. It is getting, it's going to be cold this week here, but it's, it's going to warm back up a little bit. So it should be back in, up in the 70s next week. But I have done so many cool and fun and exciting things that were a little scary at the time I was doing them. But now that I look back at that time, it's, uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. And if somebody told me, oh, you got to move back into an apartment or you got to go back to Jacksonville and live in your apartment again, I would tell them to jump off a bridge. <laughs> Because I'm not doing it. I love living in this van. And Piglet likes living in the van. And we've made lots of friends. I made a friend with Bob here at the Alpaca Farm. And um, I, I'll show you a little bit later. Uh, he has graded some uh, a little space for a tiny house on his property. And... Uh, told me we'd come up with some sort of a leasing arrangement to where I could put a tiny house there if I wanted to. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't have to, wouldn't have to leave or abandon it if something happened to him. Uh, I could k keep living there if I wanted to, or keep, you know, I wouldn't live there. I, I don't want, I want to live in my van, <laughs> but it is nice to have a, 
uh, you know, kind of a home base or, you know, just some different place to do um, without having to spend money like for an Airbnb or something. So it would be nice to have a tiny house there or maybe even, um, you know, put a destination trailer or something like that on it. He said he would put in a septic tank and uh, he's an electrician so he can uh, run electricity to it and uh, I can tap into his well. <clears throat> so I don't know. It's It's all just something that's rolling around in my brain <laughs> so uh, anyway it would be good for him too because if i'm not here you know he could rent the little place out uh, as an airbnb because it's really pretty here i don't know if it looks pretty right now out there but there's a, a lot of juniper trees and a lot of big boulders and um, it is very dusty here quite often though that's the only downfall and it gets very hot here in the summer, so I don't stay here in the summer. Anyhow, uh, so after, you know, staying at Quartzsite, I have few, had a few incidents there. I have some videos on that where I was driving around in the desert like I was in a Jeep. And I <laughs> hit, hit a berm in the desert and... It, I could hear it scrape the bottom of the van and I thought for sure I'd lost my generator and I'd knocked the water tank and the gray water tank and the black water tank out. Um, I did break the sewer pipes to the black water. So when I moved, when I finally got settled into a spot there uh, the next morning, all my black water had leaked out onto the ground, which made me feel horrible. And, uh, you know, I couldn't find anybody to fix it. So I ended up removing the flush toilet myself and I put in a uh, composting toilet. And uh, <laughs> the way I the way I did it. So when I took the this the flush toilet out, it had that flange at the bottom. And so it wasn't flat there. So I couldn't really set the composting toilet on top of it. So I don't have any tools. I don't have any room to carry any tools in this van. So what I ended up doing was cutting up a yoga mat and gluing three pieces of it together. I, did, I cut like a, a rectangular circle with a hole in the middle to go over that flange. And I set the composting toilet on top of the yoga mat mm, template, I guess you could call it. Uh, so every time I sat down on the toilet, it would it, like rock back and forth like this. And it was like that up until a couple of weeks ago when I finally found a small piece of plexiglass and I, uh, to remove the flange, which, uh, took me probably two hours to do and I damaged fingernail. Uh, but I ended up uh, getting that out finally and, uh, put that plexiglass down and uh, now it sits nice and flat and no wobbling and uh, it actually is not as tall as it was before so that's good and i have uh, i could put it back a little bit farther so i have more space to stand up between the toilet and the sink so it'll make it easier to take a shower in there so uh yeah, and then I did a couple more stupid things. Well, one thing that wasn't my fault. I got hit by either a shopping cart or somebody hit me with a car door or something at Walmart uh, a few months ago and kind of put some scratches and a dent in the door frame on the right by between the passenger door and the slider door. And uh, I uh, basically just cleaned it up and... Um, sprayed some clear paint over it so it wouldn't last it doesn't look too terrible especially from far away so i'm not too worried about it and then there was a, a time this past summer in new mexico where i got caught up on a chain link fence and put a big gouge in the running board on the driver's side of my van <laughs> which i covered up with white duct tape that's my solution to a lot of things, duct tape. So, 
but I've got to see a lot of cool things. I've gotten to go to Yuma and check out the wildlife parks there. I went to Joshua Tree and I camped in a couple of different campgrounds there and Joshua Tree is beautiful. I went to uh, northern New Mexico and stayed right on the Cimarron River uh, at a little campground in the state park, Cimarron State Park there. Stayed in a couple of campgrounds in Cimarron State Park and then, you know, visited Eagle Nest and Red River and Taos. <clears throat> Taos is getting a little too crowded for me, so it's not my favorite. But that's where the laundromat was. <laughs> so I had to go there a couple of times. And I stayed at Blue Water Lake State Park, which is uh, between Gallup and Grants, New Mexico, right off of I-40. And that is a beautiful state park. I really enjoyed staying there. I stayed there twice this past summer. And then I... Uh, saw it was getting cool a little bit it had cooled down a little bit so I went to the Grand Canyon and of course the day that I went there it was hot <laughs> so uh so I couldn't run my generator in the campground during the day so that kind of put a damper on things so I only stayed one night but I did get to see the Grand Canyon and I have a video on that and then a week ago, a couple of weeks ago, I don't even remember how long ago it was now, I went to the Balloon Fiesta in Albuquerque. And uh, it was fun, but it would have been a whole lot more fun if I had been with some people, you know, had some friends to go with. Um, it was a lot of walking. A lot, a lot, a lot of walking. <laughs> and my back was uh, suffered for it a little bit but I've spent a great deal of time here on the alpaca farm in Snowflake uh, Bob has become my best friend and uh, I enjoy his company and he enjoys my company so I come here whenever I can whenever the weather allows it and uh, I cook dinner for us and we watch uh, movies or right now uh we're watching ozark binge watching ozark so we watch a couple of episodes of ozark every night and uh so it's nice to have company but i also like my solitude so i like the option of being by myself whenever i want so I'm going to be staying here for a while uh, until, like I said, the weather starts getting too cold. And then I'll start heading down to Quartzsite. Um, I may go down to Yuma and stay. I've got a Thousand Trails membership, so I may uh, stay at a Thousand Trails. There's several of them in Yuma. Uh, that like the end of November or sometime in December. And then there's the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous in the Women's Rubber Tramp Rendezvous and the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous in Quartzsite in January. I think it's the somewhere around the 10th or 11th or something like that. And then uh, the, they have a big RV show there and the Rock and Gym show, but I I don't care much for big crowds like that, so I I probably will go to Yuma or maybe go south Southern California or maybe Joshua Tree if it's not too cold. It's probably be too cold then. But anyway, well I'll find some place to go. Uh to get away from the crowds. So anyway, I'd say my first year of van life has uh been a big success. I've had some issues with the van. Uh oh forgot about the awning blowing off but the, that got fixed by the company, by um, the company that makes the awning. They replaced it for me. And I also had an issue with my uh, induction cooktop, and that was replaced for me as well. And so far, the replacement's hanging in there. I have to uh, sometimes hit, turn the breaker on and off to get it to heat up, <laughs> to get it to work. <laughs> If, especially if I switch pan sizes in the middle, like if I cook something in a big pan and then switch to a small pan, it won't 
it won't turn on so i have to turn the breaker off and wait a few seconds and then turn it back on and then it works fine so and then i uh you know i got this blue eddy system which i think is going to be awesome once i get a couple of more solar panels i think i may not have to ever run my generator again hopefully or at least not very often so uh yeah van life has been really fun and cool and i appreciate the solitude and or the ability to hang out with other people if i want to um yeah it's just a it's a, just a really nice lifestyle to be able to pick up and leave if you get tired to stay in one place and go check out another place or if the weather gets too hot or if the weather gets too cold you just go to a different place and it's it's really really wonderful so if you're thinking about doing van life and you have any concerns about it put in the comments what those are and maybe i'll make a video on that and answer any questions that you might have because i'm telling you it is a lot of fun it really really is a lot of fun okay i will see you in the next video bye